hung in there. <laughs> anyway, and then uh, I have one son. He's 40 years old. Uh, he's my pastor, pastor of faith, uh, independent Baptist church in a place called White Pine, Tennessee, which is um, 45 minutes from Pigeon Forge, maybe an hour from Gatlinburg if you're ever up there on vacation. Um, exit 8 on up uh, towards Virginia. You can get there uh, it, depending on how you drive. <laughs> I get there fast when I go anywhere. Amen. And, and <laughs> some of you, some of y'all need to smile. I'm telling you, I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Y'all not be nervous. I get nervous in these churches. I preach in prison. I don't get nervous there. I know they're all crooks, but I don't know. I don't know about all of you. Amen. Just getting to know you. But anyhow, I, I've been uh, saved since 1974, and. Uh, I've always been a Baptist and a Baptist church, and uh, you don't have to be a Baptist to be saved. You got to be one to be right. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be one if I didn't think it's right. Amen. Anyway, and I've been of different kinds. I only got lined up with the right, right kind. And uh, anyway, I'm trying to get started here. Um, like I said, I've been doing prison work for 31 years. I'm 72 years old. That's not the end of the world, but I can see it from here. You understand what I mean? I, I'm on the downhill side of this thing. Amen. My mother died. She was 77. My dad was 76. My older brother was 60. My sister, a little older than me, she died a couple years ago. She was 72. I got a younger brother. Uh, lives up in Ohio. Uh, if that has anything to do with my longevity, I don't have a whole lot of time left. Amen. But I want to serve the Lord no matter what. And Somebody said, how long are you going to do prison work? As long as I can go. And until I get down where I can't go, uh, uh, that'll probably be the end of that. But anyhow, I appreciate the privilege of coming by. I want you to look here in Acts chapter 8, and a uh, very familiar story here I'm going to read, and begin in verse uh, 25, Acts chapter 8, verse 25. You pray for me. I'm, I, I'm not making an excuse. I'm a little under the weather. I'm on. Uh, they put me on this cholesterol medicine. I've tried... It's kind of like taking rat poison. Amen. It, it, it ain't meant to make you feel good, even though it's meant to make you get better. <laughs> Wish they'd come up and make you feel better while you're getting better, wouldn't you? But it's got me a little draggy this morning, so I'm, I, I'm not making an excuse. So if I stutter and sputter around, it's not me. <laughs> it's that dope they got me on. Amen. <laughs> but uh, it's what it is. And here at verse 25, I don't know why I said all that. <laughs> Amen. I said it anyway. Uh, I ain't going to get to come back, so i just say anything while I'm here. Uh, verse 25, Acts chapter 8, verse 25. It said, And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord uh, spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go, to, to, uh, go towards the south, under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto God that which is desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and, and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who should declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom spook, uh, speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto certain uh, water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest all thy heart, thou mayest. These perverted Bibles don't have that verse in it. Uh, amen. They don't have that verse. So if you got one of them Bibles, you ought to get rid of it. Uh, amen. Get you a good King James Bible. Amen. How am I doing out there? I meant to tell you that a while ago. I believe that Bible is perfect. Amen. And uh, a perfect God couldn't get us nothing but a perfect Bible. And uh, amen. Well, let's, I don't want to park there, but it's kind of like believing in evolution. You're not born that stupid. You go off to some school and get you a Ph.D. in ignorance. Amen. To believe in evolution. Isn't that right? 
I'll leave that alone. They say, it ain't working here. It worked at the last church was at, but this crowd different. Amen. But he said, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip, uh, uh, but Philip was found in uh, uh, Azotus, and passing through, preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Father, we ask you to help us today. We, we're a little nervous. We just uh, drag you a little bit. But you can help us, Lord. There's no doubt in my mind you can get me out of the way and, and the Holy Ghost work and use me this morning. For your glory, we'd like to be a blessing to this brother that's trusted us, advised by these people here, Lord. Uh, they don't know me. I didn't come here to hurt them. I'd like to say something that they would help them and, and, be, and be pleasing to thee. We ask you to use us for that purpose. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Uh, everybody here, most likely, if you've been around church, you're familiar with this fellow, this Ethiopian eunuch. Here he'd been down to Jerusalem, to a place of worship. He, in other words, he, he, you could say he kind of went to church, even though uh, we don't go to synagogues. We're not Orthodox Jews. And we eat all the pork we want to. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, amen. And truth of the matter is, uh, uh, he went down there. He'd, he'd been there. No doubt they'd expounded. Somebody had been uh, talking about Isaiah, the book of Isaiah 53, I believe it is, uh, about Jesus Christ. He was on his way back home uh, reading the Bible, but he didn't understand the Bible. The natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, uh, it, neither can he know their foolish to him, neither can he know them because their spirit to discern. A lost man cannot understand the Bible until the Holy Ghost uh, turns the light on for him. Amen. That's he said. And Jesus said, no man could come to me except the Father who sent me draw him. You can't get saved. You can get God to save whosoever, and he'll forgive you for whatsoever, but he won't save you whensoever. Amen. You'll have to come on his time and on his terms uh, if you get in. That's why I said, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. I heard the gospel message many times uh, as a lost man. Uh, I knew the historical facts about Christ. But one day, 1974, I heard his voice. Uh, he talked to me. Amen. Uh, but here uh, you, you got this man, and you got this saved man. Uh, uh, amen. This saved man, this man Philip. Uh, amen. Uh, and and I, I pass out, we pass out lots of gospel tracts uh, doing prison ministry. Most prisons we go to have at least a 1,000 inmates. Uh, so we try to get a gospel track in each one of them, and we believe his word won't come back void. Uh, but this man was reading the Bible, uh, amen, been to a religious gathering where somebody ex expounded on that part of the Scripture, uh, but he still did not understand it. Uh, and God in his mercy and his grace uh, sent this man Philip to cross this saved man, to cross this sinner's man's path at the right time. Uh, amen. And I try to give a gospel track out to anybody to take it, Leave one wherever I can. Uh, but every now and then I cross the right person's uh, track uh, that's uh, ready to receive it. Uh, amen. Always looking, always looking uh, for somebody that's interested. Uh, and here you know, uh, uh, then Philip, he said, Understandeth what thou readest. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he began to preach about Jesus uh, from the Old Testament Bible. And they came to some water here. Uh, and the, Philip, uh, and the Ethiopian said to Philip, Here's some water. What doth hinder me be baptized? Uh, he said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. There's a difference in having Jesus in your head and having him in your heart. Uh, most likely right here in this part of the country, just like where I live, uh, uh, even rank sinners, uh, even rank heathen sinners uh, believe in historic facts about Jesus Christ. Uh, Amen, uh, and they do. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, where I live, uh, uh, even the, the worst of sinners believe in Jesus Christ. When I was a boy, about everybody had a large, can, uh, a large print King James Bible on their coffee table. Even lost people had that. Uh, nobody read it in their house, but if you drop cigarette ashes on it or spilt something on it, uh, my dad is a, uh, was a lost sinner, but he'd slap you blind uh, for disrespect to God's Word. Uh, Am I doing any good here? Amen. Uh, the truth of the matter is here, uh, uh, he, he, he said, uh, he preached Jesus to him. Uh, they came to this water, and he said, What doth hinder me be baptized? He said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. Uh, and he said, I believe that Jesus uh, Christ is the Son of God. And they both went down into the water. Uh, and when they come up by the water, the Spirit caught away Philip. And this Ethiopian eunuch had gotten saved. Uh, 
and he went on his way rejoicing. Uh, I can almost see him now, can't you? Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, but truth of the matter is, uh, do you have it in your head uh, or is it in your heart? Amen. I don't believe in the virgin birth of Christ no more today than I did when I was a dope-shooting, liquor-drinking uh, idiot. Amen. I, I, I knew that Jesus Christ was weird. I didn't understand it. I didn't know all about it. I believed in his virgin birth. I believed in his bodily resurrection. I went to church sometime. My grandma could get me to go to church sometime at Christmas. Amen. I'd go because I loved that old lady, and I'd go because uh, I believed in the virgin birth. Uh, Amen. Then she talked me into going uh, at Easter uh, uh, because I believed in the resurrection uh, of this man named Jesus. I didn't know what it meant. And then she'd get me to go at homecoming because I like eating chicken. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Y'all have home and come around here. Uh, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So my grandma put a chicken wing on the hook. Hallelujah. Uh, she'd say, hey, they're cooking chicken, making tater salad and pies and cakes down there. Even a drunk would go for a free meal. Uh, I'd go down there to eat that meal, but before you got to eat, uh, that preacher would hang you out over hell for about 45 minutes, uh, make you feel like a sheep killing dog. Uh, when he got done preaching, I didn't want no chicken. I wanted out there. Uh, hallelujah. But faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My ma, she couldn't read or write. She was illiterate. She didn't know how to drive. When in the early 1900s, barefooted, she'd drive turkeys across Plains Mountain. You don't know where it's at, about 25, 30 miles to the market. Little old backward woman. Her my grandpa made moonshine liquor. And uh, my grandpa get drunk on that liquor made him a very violent man. And he'd beat her up with his fist. She'd get drunk on that liquor, put up with him. When I was 14 years old, uh, I was uh, this little old bitter boy with a chip on my shoulder and a dirty mouth raised in the center. My mother and dad both had a drinking problem. We were just sinners. We did what sinners do. Uh, sinners, some sinners express their sinful nature outwardly more than others. Uh, amen. But we're all sinners. Uh, amen. And my grandpa, in a drunken rage one day, I was a 14-year-old boy. Uh, uh, amen. He'd been beating on my grandmother. Uh, and I, 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 and I, I, he was drunk. Uh, in a rage, and I cussed him, talked back to him, used some cuss words that day, and before that day was over, he shot me with a 12-gauge shotgun and uh, left me laying in a patch of wood right behind his house. A few days later, though, my grandma and grandpa visit Fairview Bible Baptist Church. When he come home that day, throw the liquor out the door, put the shotguns up in the closet, started going to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night, Wednesday night, something wonderful had happened to them down there. Amen. Am I doing any good here? They got marvelously saved. And uh, amen. And they started working on me here. Uh, uh, my question is, I believed in Jesus in my head. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Uh, there is a perverted gospel. You need to be sure you believe the right gospel. The gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4, is that Christ died for your sins as according to Scripture. Uh, that he was buried on the third day. He bodily resurrected on his own power according to Scripture. Uh, if he got hung uh, uh, with a noose, you couldn't be saved. Uh, if he got run over with a chariot, you couldn't be saved. Uh, if he got shot through with a dart, you couldn't be saved. Had to die exactly where he died, when he died, in the manner that he died. Uh, Resurrect, just like you have to believe the gospel according to the scriptures. Uh, amen. Uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, you can be deceived. Paul, writing in the book of Galatians, uh, I marvel that you're so soon removing him, call you the grace of Christ under another gospel, which is not another. Uh, but there'd be some that uh, would trouble you, would pervert the gospel of Christ. Uh, Though we are an angel from heaven, preach into the gospel unto you that which we preach. Let him be a curse. Uh, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach into the gospel unto that which you receive, let him be a curse. Uh, amen. There is a perverted gospel. Uh, if you add baptism to the gospel, you have perverted it. Uh, if you add being a Baptist and belonging to the Baptist church to the gospel, uh, you have perverted the gospel. Uh, if you add one work, one work, and whatsoever work to it, you have perverted the gospel. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, salvation is through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. You come repenting uh, uh, in your heart of your sin, repentance toward 
God the Father, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that He paid your sin debt. That's the only way you can get saved. Amen. Uh, and I, I'm not knocking being a Baptist. I'm proud to be one of them. Uh, hallelujah. There are about 57 kinds up there where I live. Uh, most of them confused, don't uh, agree on nothing. Confused as a termite and a yo-yo. But I'm proud to be one of them. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. I got that across. Isn't it? Amen. Who the matter is, uh, you need to be sure you've got the right thing. Not just in your head. You better have it in your heart. If thou believest with all thy heart. Amen. It's more than just your head. It's everything in you. It's the real you. Uh, amen. Matthew 7 said, Enter at the straight gate. Wide is the gate. Broad is the way which leads to destruction. Many there be which go in there at because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way which leads unto life. And few there be defined it. Then he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but end with a ravening wolves. Uh, he said, You'll know them by the fruit they bear. And then he talks about a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, then he goes on, Say, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. Uh, for many were saying that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in thy name cast out devils, in thy name done all these wonderful words. Uh, then Jesus is going to profess unto them, Depart from me, I know you not, ye that work iniquity. Uh, then he said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, and like him a wise man, build his house upon the rock, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, beat up on the house, and the house fell not, for it was built upon the rock. Uh, but he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not like him a uh, foolish man that built his house upon the sand. Uh, the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat up on the house, and the house fell, and great was the fall of it. Uh, amen. James said, uh, uh, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Uh, for if any man shall hear the word, not a doer, like a man, behold his natural face in the glass, behold himself, go his way, straightway, forget what manner man he was. Uh, for whosoever looketh in the perfect law of liberty, continue therein, this man being not a forgetful here, uh, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Uh, if any man among you seem to be religious, proud not his tongue, deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Uh, for pure religion undefiled before God and the Father says to visit the fathers and the widows in affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. Can I get an amen out somebody? I worked hard on that, hallelujah. That didn't impress you much, but you get up here and look at this crowd and see how you do with it. I'm just trying to tell you, uh, James wasn't teaching works to get saved, works to stay saved. He said, but the only way I believe you are saved by the works that you do. See, God sees your heart. When you trust me with all your heart, I can't see your heart. I, I can only see the outward man. Amen. And, and there, there has to be some evidence. Amen. So many people profess got saved when they're little old youngins, but they ain't never really got uh, faithful to nothing, done nothing for the Lord. Uh, there's something wrong there. Amen. I'm not trying to be mean. Uh, I'm just trying to get somewhere, and y'all ain't helping me get there. I'll get there in a minute. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you this is serious business. Uh, amen. About this being saved. Uh, a lot of folks uh, have been deceived. Uh, Amen. Made a false profession. Uh, an emotional thing. And I believe you can get emotional when you get saved. Uh, amen. When I got saved, uh, one reason I know I'm saved this morning, whether you know it or not, I know I am because of the birth I've experienced. Uh, by this new birth, I've been made alive. Uh, he that hath the Son have life. He that hath not the Son of God have not life. Uh, Jesus in John chapter 3 said there was a man of the Pharisees uh, named Nicodemus, a ruse of Jews. Uh, same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that our teacher come from God, uh, but no man can do these miracles I do except God be with him. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter in the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Uh, and Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. Uh, for that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, must be born again. Uh, the wind bloweth where it listen, now here's the sound of it, canst tell whence it cometh where so is everyone that's born to the Spirit. Uh, you can no be bo more, more being born to the Spirit and not know it. Uh, no more than you're born to the flesh and know it. You do know you're alive, don't you? And he that hath the Son have life. He that hath not the Son of God have not life. Uh, amen. I don't believe you can be saved and not know it. Amen. But I do believe you can be saved and doubt it. And I, but I never did doubt it till I got it. That make any sense to you? There's no con a lost man don't know. He's he's blind. He's like a blind man. He can't see. But once the light's turned on, Amen. When the light gets turned on, the war starts. Isn't that right? The old nature, new nature, and and, and the devil and all these demons uh, and the world and your flesh. Amen. That's proof you're really saved. When you get saved, uh, the flesh starts against the spirit. Spirit against the flesh. These two be contrary to one another. So you could not do things you would. Amen. Uh, uh, the old nature. God didn't blow out stump and all when He saved me. The stump's still there. 
you aggravate me enough, you'll seize up. Isn't that right? Amen. I, I, I could live right if I didn't have to drive so much. Amen. I've never seen so many idiots on the highway in my life. You, my wife said, you're so impatient. I said, no, I got up there. His brain did. Don't even know I'm headed to church to spread joy and cheer. Move over. Get out of the way. I, I got things to do. Hallelujah. That's that old stump. <laughs> I know y'all think you got rid of yours. I'll ask your wife later and see how you do at the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've never won one of the positives, but I'm not giving up the fight. <laughs> I know I'm right whether she ever admits it or not. Hallelujah. I know I am. <laughs> I've told her I was sorry many times when I really wasn't before I could sleep at night. They're not going to tell you they are. Hallelujah. We promised never to go to bed mad. I've stayed a week at a time, but I've kept my word about it. Hey, I'm just trying to tell you that old man's in there. Yeah. Amen. That's one proof you saved. Amen. Uh, amen. And, and you're different, though. Uh, amen. The Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, you've been saved. The Holy Spirit is what brought you to a saving knowledge of Christ. He's what convicted you of your sin through the Word of God. He's the one that gave you faith to believe and a desire to repent before you know what repentance and, and, uh, and, and faith was. Ain't I doing any good? My grandma, she couldn't read or write, but she loved me. And I got strung out on dope in the early 70s in really bad shape and just a bum. I couldn't hold down a job. And they gave me a place to sleep and a, uh, a bowl of beans they keep me from sleeping in the mission house or some bridge or ditch somewhere sometime. I was in bad shape. My mom, she couldn't read or write, but she'd go to church, and, and uh, she'd hear the preacher say, go out in the highways and hedges, and compel, him, compel him to come in. My house might be filled. So she did all she could do to get me under the word of God. The same church she got saved in, she knew God take that liquor away from her. My grandpa changed their life. He could do the same for me if she could get me down there. Amen. Uh, in 1974, in the month of November, on a Sunday morning, uh, I'm not bragging about sin. Early that morning, I was in a dope house in a housing project apartment in the town where I live uh, doing what drug addicts do. Uh, amen. I'm not proud of that, boasting about it, but I was in uh, bad shape. I was in bad shape. And the Holy Ghost came over in that dope house where I was at. Uh, amen. Uh, why he talked to me and didn't say nothing to them other old boys, I, I don't have no idea. I can't explain that. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I'd been under conviction. Didn't know what conviction was till I got converted. I hated what I was and how I lived. And my grandma had been working on me, and that preacher had been working on me. When they get me down there, and I was sick of my sin, but I didn't know what to do about it. They say, "Won't you get a haircut, get a job, quit smoking, quit doping, quit cussing, and go to church and do better?" Uh, well, a man wants to do that, but that won't save you. Amen. It's kind of like when Jesus sent that two disciples. He said, "You'll go over there and find the colt tied by the door, where two ways meet. Loose him and bring him." Uh, Amen. That donkey couldn't get his uh, couldn't untie a rope. He's a picture of a sinner. Uh, it took two to loose him. Uh, the Holy Spirit and the and the Holy Scriptures uh, is what has to turn you loose. Uh, and he said, "Go turn him loose." He was in a place where two ways meet. Uh, that's where you're at when you get convicted and you you got to make a choice. You want to go to hell? You want to get right with God? Go to heaven? You make that choice uh, by the door. Uh, Jesus is the door. Uh, amen. That's where I was at. Uh, I'm glad uh, that morning the Holy Ghost come and untie the the rope. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I was sitting in that place, and I'm not bragging on sin, uh, but the Spirit of God, and I know him now, I didn't know what was going on in my mind. Uh, somebody said, David, put the dope down, put the booze down. If you'll hurry, you'll get over at the church where your mom and Paul's at before the service is over. Uh, that's not normal thinking for a rank sinner with hair down here and a pair of bell-bottom bitches on with patches on them uh, and a T-shirt with a peace sign on it. Uh, me, Nixon, and the Pope, Groovy, you know, uh, what an idiot. Amen. Uh, about 20 minutes after 11, I give up the struggle. Uh, I didn't know I was going to get saved, didn't know what being saved was. I, I turned around, them old boys that sold dope. I said, I'll see you fellas. I, they said, where are you going else? I said, I'm going to church. I, they said, why? I said, I don't know why. I, they said, you must be stoned. I thought to myself, stone drunk or crazy. I, I am sick of all this. I, I didn't know I was going to get saved, didn't know what was going on, but I pulled in Fairview Bible Baptist Church I, on a Sunday morning, walked in that church at 1130. I, singing was over. Preacher Winston, he's in heaven. I, I, amen. I was weeping like a baby shaking all over probably from all that dope I'd been doing uh, under old time Holy Ghost conviction uh, I walked in that church I'd been there the Sunday before uh, and uh, that Sunday I walked in there uh, about 200, 250 people 500 eyeballs uh, all of them seemed to turn and look at me uh, I could hear some of them going he's back, he's back I'm glad I got back, hallelujah uh, one lady on one side of the church she said, whoa another one on the other side said, whoa I, I felt like going, whoa 
Oh, I, I wasn't saved, but they had me fired up. Some of y'all ought to try that. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is a tough crowd. Hallelujah. Amen. I sat down next to my grandpa. He's a weeping. He'd been shot in the face. One of his eyes had been shot out. He had a gold-plated tooth. Uh, he was a tough old bird even after he got saved. Uh, he didn't show much emotion. Uh, he wasn't a uh, uh, kind of fella to hug your neck and tell you love, but you know what he did. Uh, he was a weeping. That tooth was shining in the light. Pat me on the leg. said, boy, we're glad you're here. Hey, 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 man, preaching Winston got done. Uh, hey, man, preaching, I've been around church enough to know uh, when he said, would anybody like, uh, hey, man, they didn't have to sing three sad songs by the Do-Right Quartet. Uh, I actually got saved sitting in the pew before I got up. Didn't know that till I read my Bible a little later. Uh, hallelujah, hey, man. Uh, I fell on my face on an altar. About 40 people gathered around me. They didn't try to show me the ten toes on Daniel's uh, image or, or the book of Revelation. What would that mean to me? Uh, when I I got up off my knees. My little old grandma was doing that. I believe she's doing that this morning. Uh, uh, somebody said you pray the sinner's prayer. I guess I did. Every prayer I'd ever prayed was a sinner's prayer. What did I know about a sinner's prayer? Uh, they said, did you come down Romans Road? No, I drove down Marguerite Drive. Uh, I knew he was a Savior. I knew I was a dirty sinner. I was sick and shamed of my sin. Thank God Almighty. Amen. God filled my heart full of peace. Took that heavy load of guilt and shame off me. I've been on my way to heaven ever since that day. You better know you're saved. It's not something you want to gamble with. You better have a no soul. These things that were written on you that believe on the name of God, yet you may know that you have eternal life. If I doubted it one bit this morning, I'd get on my face and get it settled before I leave this building. This thing's winding down. Am I doing any good here? Some of y'all look like you're in a dentist's office. I'm not drilling teeth. I, I'm trying to preach a little bit. I've got over being nervous. Some of y'all look a little uptight now. Hallelujah. I'd rather have it that way, wouldn't you? Amen. Well, the birth I've experienced. The Bible I've examined. By this Bible, I have full assurance. I never feel saved on Monday. I hate Mondays. Ain't going to be no Mondays in heaven. Just one big Sunday. Amen. You're looking forward to Monday in the wintertime sometime. Get up and below zero. Got to scrape ice off your window about 5 o'clock going to work. You, a job you hate working for somebody dumber than you. Amen. That don't interest me much. Amen. Best thing to do on Monday, get your high-powered rifle and go kill something. That'll help you. You don't have to hang it on the wall. Just like to watch it blow up. <laughs> Must have a sissy in here. It didn't go over to you yet. <laughs> I'm trying to have a good time. Some of you ain't, but I'm... Amen. Sometimes you don't feel like you're saved. I got saved in the church. Some believe you can lose it. Some believe forever. I didn't know how long it's going to last. Matter of fact, when I got saved, they didn't even count you being saved until you showed up on Wednesday. I showed back up on Sunday night before I knew it was a sin not to be there. I'd go 45 minutes early. If I didn't do nothing else, I went out back and smoked with the deacon. <laughs> Some of y'all still smoking with the deacon. Amen. Two matter is, I'm just excited. Amen. Some believe you can lose it. Some believe you forever. I've been so rough. You know, when you get saved, you've been brought up in church, you already have a foundation under you. Some moral fiber instilled in you through your family and the Bible, biblical fears and respect. But you ain't never been around a whole lot of it. You're just a rank, dirty, ungodly, vulgar mouth person. Uh, yeah, it takes a little time to get on your feet, spiritually speaking. He gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. They will all come to unity of faith under the knowledge of the Son of God and the perfect man, under the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind and dark, by the slight of men, by the cunning craftiness, for by the lie and wait to see, the speaking the truth and love, and may grow up in him and all things which is ahead, even uh, Christ, from whom the whole body is fitly joined together, compact with the joint supply, supporting the effect of working, measure every part, make an increase of the body, and the edify itself in love. Could I get an amen out of somebody? Hallelujah. Amen. Gave you the gifts of the church to teach you how to rightly divide it and get some assurance in you. The Bible said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rules of darkness, world, against spiritual wickedness, high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand in the evil day. Then all do you stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about the truth, having on the breastplate of right, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where they shall quench all the fire darts of the wicked. Take the helm of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, while prayer, supplication, and spirit. Watch it, therefore, with all persecution, supplication, all saints. 
I drank a whole lot of coffee this morning. You could paint a fence with that stuff. So if you can't get the Holy Ghost on, drink some of that coffee. That'll get you fired up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, most people don't know the difference anyhow. Amen. I, I'm just trying to tell you, you, you got those gifts. You have to put the armor. You have to learn how to defend yourself. Am I boring to you? Some of y'all look like you're a little bored. I'd rather be mad as bored when you. That's a better emotion. If I go to church, make me weep, make me laugh, make me mad, but don't bore me. <laughs> I ain't coming back if you bore me. Amen. And if you make me mad, I might come back to fight. <laughs> Amen. Y'all missed some of you on that one. Amen. Two matter is you have to learn some things. You have to learn. You have to learn how to uh, defend. You have to. You can't go by your feelings. Now, I'm not saying you can't feel what you're going on, but you can't always go in your feelings and get you fouled up. Amen. You got to take him at his word. When I got saved, I took him at his word. Come unto me, all you labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I took him at his word. I went that morning. I needed rest. And he gave me rest and peace. And then when doubt come, I take his word. Read his word. He said he gave me eternal life. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He washed my past, present, all my possible sins away. The very second I believe with all my heart. Cleansed me. Made me as clean in the mind of God as Jesus Christ himself is. The way God looks at us. That's what he does. And he baptized you in the body of Christ. That's his church. Took up his abode in your body. Sealed you uh, until the day. Imputed Christ is right to you because you believe the record God gave his son. That all happened. Man. You got to learn those things. That all happened the very second I believe with all my heart. Amen. Well, you got to take his word. And by this Bible, we, uh, we, uh, the Bible that I've examined gives me full assurance. Amen. And then the behavior I've exhibited. I'm trying to hurry. I, I know some of you done. I'm, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> Somebody smiled. There you go. I got that. She smiled. Thank you. That helped me. Amen. Over here, this crowd don't smile as much as they do. <laughs> I'm gonna stay over on this side. <laughs> hey, by the also behavior I've exhibited. By this behavior, I'm greatly amazed. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that morning I got saved. I had hair down here, a pair of bell bottom bridges, patches on them. Can <laughs> you see me? A T-shirt with a piece of and needle tracks in both my arms. Smell a whiskey or beer on my breath. On my way to hell. And God took me in just like I look. Isn't that wonderful? We wore a bell about our bitches, but they fit us. Amen. They did fit us. This crowd nowadays, you know, they wear their, these boys wear their bitches too big. And these women wear their bitches too little. See, and I ain't getting to come back. Some of them, they wear them hip huggers. Some of them got more hip than them things to hug. You've seen them, ain't you? I'm just trying to have a good time here. I, I, I shouldn't have said that, but out there, out there in eternity. My wife has said, why do you do that? I said, I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You can no more be saved and not change your attitude, your appetite, and your appearance. No more than you can stand that five-gallon bucket of water stick your finger in that wall punch like it looks like. You are going to make an immediate change. You're going to be a new creature. <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna have to tell everybody I got a hold something and something got a hold of me. We'll know it if we carry your smoking carcass out of here. You're a different person. That's what God does. He changes us. And, and uh, you get changed on the inside, but then God takes His word and starts taking it on the inside, making it show up on the outside. Am I making any sense here? I done made some of you mad cutting up there. You, you'll get over it. Amen. Uh, the preacher got some volume. He'll give you, calm your nerve. That's why. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The truth of the matter is, uh, people get upset, but God changed it. You say, it don't make no difference. Well, what if I come in here this morning with one of them little do-rags tied around my head, a little diamond in my ear, a little chain over my nose, decals all over my body, a T-shirt with Budweiser sign on it, with a Bible in my arm saying, hey, I'm the preacher. I've come to preach. Ain't nobody here listening to you. Judge me, ain't you? That's what people think. And you're just trying to tell you, God changes all that thought I'd bear the hatchet on that one. Amen. Don't drop my support now. Amen. Don't do nothing foolish. I pray God remove your candlestick around here. I'm telling you, don't mess with me like that. But God help us. Amen. I'm glad he changed me. I don't want to be a different. By the way, let me say this while I've said everything else. <laughs> the preacher didn't give me a hard time. I still look like a hippie. I still like just as stupid as ever. Man, look at that. That's how you look. You got to fit in. You look as stupid as you can. <laughs> we didn't paint a hair orange, though. Amen. I wish I had some hair to paint, but I but uh, we didn't paint. We didn't do that blue hair deal. I'm doing that purple hair deal. Amen. 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 We put decals all over our body. 
But I'll be honest with you, I did that when I, before I got saved. I, when I was 13 year old, just a little old lost boy, I thought I was in love with this girl. You lose your mind when you get about 13. You do. Don't things start changing? You're playing with little trucks and in the mud, and all of a sudden this girl goes by. And, oh, I believe I love her. I got me some Indian ink and a thread and tattooed her name in my arm. That's a true story. I mean, three days later, she dumped me. Got to watch whose name you put on you, I'm telling you. And I'm glad that, I, amen, I, I saw her about 25 years later. She had changed. <laughs> changed, you know what I mean? <laughs> amen. She ch- and I, <laughs> that's just the truth. This is the truth. I'm not, uh, I went to the doctor. I said, Doc, get that big girl's name off my arm, will you? <laughs> and he had to skin me. You ain't getting nothing else. I said, we might as well have a good time. That's a true story. I, so I don't pick on you. I've done all that stuff trying to fit in. We don't have to fit in. We're peculiar people. We're different. And we let everybody know we're different, whether it makes people mad or not. I'm not apologizing for nothing I said. I'm just telling you, I've done about every dumb thing you can do. So I'm just trying to help you. Well, it didn't help you, but I'm trying to. I'm glad God changed me. Praise God. I'm glad he changed me. And then last of all, and I know you're glad I finally got there. I'm glad I finally got there. Amen. The birth I've experienced, the Bible I've examined, the behavior I've exhibited. Also, I know I'm saved because of the belt that I've endured. By this belt, I have a great advantage. Wherefore, seeing we're all compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish our faith. Who for the joy that set before me endured the cross, despite the shame, and is sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him which endured such condemnation sinners against himself, they should be weary and faint in your mind. You're not yet resisted on the blood, trying to contend. Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto the Son? My Son, despise not the chase of the Lord, nor faint when thou rebuke to him, for whom the Lord loveth, he chased and scourged every son whom he received. But if you endure chastisement, God dealeth with you as with son. For what son of you the Father chased not? But if ye be without chastisement, well of all the partakers, then are you a bastard and not a son. We've had fathers of our flesh who corrected us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much more be subjected to the Father, Spirit, and Leo? For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be a partaker of his holiness. Amen. That's proof you've really been saved when you get chastened by the Lord. In other words, if you're really saved, you don't have to get sin in your life. Bible said, be angry, sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole seal no more, but rather let him labor, work in his hand, that which is good, if he have given it. And let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, if you to edify, may minister grace unto you. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you seal under the day. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you. All malice be a kind one another. Tender heart and forgive one another, as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, I, I tell you, I, it's nothing to brag about. I have a little temper. Well, sometimes it's more than a little. That's nothing to brag about. Anyway, the Bible said, train up a child while it's young, the way it should grow, when it goes old, not depart from it. Well, the reversal to that, when you're brought up around drunkenness and drugs and cussing, violence, fighting in the home, amen, that's instilled in them. Most drunks and drug addicts are selfish people, so when they don't get their way, they express it loudly and violently in their home in front of them young'uns. And them young'uns get that instilled in them, and they think that's the way you express yourself. And then after you get saved, if you're like me, I still struggle with some of that. I'm not an in-your-face kind of fellow. I wish I could do better with it. I, I'm not doing any good here. Do I need a priest up here to confess my sins to? But I, I'm just trying to tell you. Be, ang- be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on that. Neither get- I got saved. You get saved, you know, and the Holy Ghost lives in. You don't have to wait till Sunday to know when you grieved him. Amen? He'll tell you, he'll tell you don't do it. Then you go ahead and do something. Then you're ashamed. Can't sleep good. I'd even be questioned if he even saved. Then you wonder, why do I feel like this? Doesn't feel like it before every person gets saved. You, you grieved him. He's very sensitive. When you grieve him, it grieves you that you grieved him. You don't lose peace with God, but you lose a piece of God, and you're miserable on the inside without anybody knowing about it except you and the Lord. Am I doing any good here? Isn't that right? And I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. Sometimes I get bent out of shape and, and say stupid stuff. And I, I know you, that surprises some of you saying I've said so much. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes, you know, in the home, you get a little hateful one another in the home, and the woman's sensitive, you hurt her feelings, or she says something to you, and you say, I'm the boss here, okay. 
Mark Spear you are. <laughs> You'll find out who the boss is when that lawyer gets done with you. <laughs> You'll be eating free cheese at the mission house. You'll see who owned everything. Hey, truth of the matter is, the truth of the is, all kidding aside, your tear ducts dry up. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I don't know if it's helping. I've got over being nervous, and I've got over care. <laughs> But you know, you, 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 you get a little fuss in the home or you get a little bent out of shape on the job with somebody, say something hateful to them or a little rough, and you wish you hadn't. Tear ducts dry up. You still feel God, but it's not that good feeling. You don't have that peace, that wonderful peace that comes with living right and walking with him like you should. Amen. Am I doing any good here? Amen. Go to church. Preacher don't know what you've been doing. He just got a message. God's got a message for you because God loves you. He got mercy for you. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you in that service. I've done it. He speaks to me. He said, David, that's for you. You need to get that straightened out. Amen. Go to the altar. Confess all that stuff that, uh, that you know is in your heart. Apologize if you got bent out of shape or whoever. Make it right best you can. They'll let you. Amen. Am I doing any good here? And you think you got the victory. Got to watch. Got to watch. I'm saved. I've been saved for 47, almost 48 years old, somewhere right there. I think, man, surely I won't ever lose my temper again. Better watch. <laughs> Better watch yourself. What you say, you get messed up. Surely I won't never let that happen again. Amen. Get right with God. Amen. Holy Spirit, little dove floating around in there again. Amen. Isn't that right? Wonderful. Thing. Riding down the road, thinking, man, I've got the victory. Amen. Doing the speed limit. You've really got right with God. Listen to gospel music. Tears running down your face. It's sad. A little dove floating around there. About that time when he's brain dead, teenager. <laughs> you know, one paints your car lime green, canary yellow, or that ugly purple. Am I doing any good here? I, I, I'm letting him be the monitor. He had a little frown on his face. I don't want him mad at me. I like him. <laughs> uh, but you know, and, and you're going down the road. And listen to God, and just enjoy it, a little Holy Spirit, a little dove floating around. About that time, these guys take their, they, they, they took the shocks out from under that car, and the tires, they cut the tires in the fender. I've never understood that. Have you? You got them, you got them wheels that still turn when the car stops. You get my age, you look at them long enough, you'll throw up. You've seen them, ain't you? <laughs> Crazy, crazy. <laughs> got them boom boxes in there. You've seen them things shake the earth. Boom, boom, and you pull up next to one of them at a red light, and you're shaking, your cars are shaking, and you think, man, my sugar count fell. <laughs> and you look over here, and this guy's got his hair spiked up and painted purple and a hog green in his nose. And hog. <laughs> hey, man, if you ain't careful, you'll get a pharisaical attitude. See, he's just doing what sinners do. At that time when them boys you just rode down the road, those, uh, at that time uh, that that little old, that boy in that car come by, he blows a horn. Get out of the road, old man! Uh, and the little dove flies out the window. Come here, boy! I'll slap you cross eyed That's what I do. <laughs> I'm doing right now. I know you don't have a soul. <laughs> About that time, little dove flies back in. He never did leave. God never leaves you. Never forsake you. That's proof you're saved. Nobody in the world knows what's going on inside that car with you. He'll say, why are you going to act like that? Got the Holy Spirit in you. Holy Scripture working on you. Saints of God praying for you. All your sins washed away on the way to heaven. Why do you want to let things get off? Why do you want to grieve me like that? That's proof you're saved. Now, you may not have that same kind of thing. Some of y'all probably got a little more control of things. I'm just telling you the truth. It didn't happen today. Don't look at me. It wasn't today. I didn't do it today. It's church day. <laughs> church day. I don't do that on Sunday. <laughs> Are you really saved? You got any doubt about it? I'm not trying to preach doubt. You need to know for sure. If the rapture took place today, if Jesus come for his bride, the church, it happened right now. Everybody in this building saved. All your loved ones been buried out here in the graveyard, wherever their remains are left. They save people. That body's going to resurrect with a glorified body like a son of God. And everybody in this building is saved. Going to be changed in the moment of truly life. Go up through the earth of this building in a glorified body to meet the resurrected saints of Lord Jesus Christ somewhere up in the heavens. And if you're not saved, you ain't going. God's going to send you a strong delusion to believe a lie and to be damned. Because you have to say you're going to write you wouldn't get saved. You better get that thing fixed. All serious stuff. I go on a bunch of old stuff, but I'm telling you, most serious thing. Greatest day of my life. 
Greatest day of my life. Only regret I had, I wish I'd done it sooner. I don't know if I could have. I wish I could have. You ever wonder why you didn't get saved before you got saved? I never did think about it until I thought about it. Miss you. I mean, I don't understand. I'm not a Calvinist. He didn't make me get saved, but he's got to make you want to get saved. Isn't that right? I don't know if I've done any good or not. If you ain't saved or you have any doubt about it, don't go out of there like that. God wants you to have that no soul assurance. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to enjoy life. And you can't enjoy life if you're on shaky ground on that. Come on, preacher. Come up here and finish this up. Pastor, you come get us something to play softer, please. Appreciate the message, Brother David. Appreciate the honesty. Brother, you talked about it a little bit Wednesday night. About a lot of folks, they profess, but they don't possess. A lot of people's banked off of emotional experience or a little prayer of, that somebody let them in because they didn't want to die and go to hell with, and they never were truly under conviction. 